Why hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow for the second in the stop motion tutorial series. So you got your location set, your lighting consistent, your camera's all rigged up, you're ready to go. Disclaimer, this video only works if you went out and bought yourself a tripod. If you haven't yet bought yourself a tripod, please turn this video off and go watch the first video and reevaluate your life and the decisions that led you to this moment where you're currently tripodless. This message is brought to you by the National Association of Tripod Users. Just buy a tripod! Now. Transformers normally turn into cars, which is great for our teaching purposes, because they're land-based vehicles that never leave the ground... ever. Okay, this, this is... guy, come on, can we turn this off? Come on, come on. So anyway, you get my point. Cars are easy to animate because in general they move in a predictable fashion, there's not a lot of moving parts to them that you gotta keep track of, and in general they just kinda suit our purposes for what we're going for today. So let's begin. In Stop Motion Studio, you're going to want to engage the onion skin. It's this slider right over here. What this does is it will overlay your last image onto what you're currently viewing so you can compare what you've done to what you're going to do next. So we start with our car in its current position and take a picture. Then we need to get it moving. And we're going to do so using a technique called ease in, ease out. Like whenever you see a car, does it go from 0 to 60 in 0.1 seconds? No. It has an acceleration curve and eases into that top speed. So we need to do the same. So pick a reference point. This is going to be really important in a bit. Personally, I use the wheel of the car as my reference. In this tiny movement, it's not gonna to matter too much, but it's good to have this in mind. Okay, so we've taken our picture. Our next picture should move a little more than that. In this case, I've moved it to the width of the tire wall. Next frame is going to be the halfway into the rim, then to the center of the wheel, three quarters of the wheel entirely, until here we're moving at one wheel length each frame. Want the car slower? Shoot your vehicle at half the distance. Faster? Double the distance. I mean, of course you can shoot slow and speed up the frame rate to have the car go faster and a smoother frame rate, but if you want to keep your frame rate consistent, you need to shoot at the frame rate you want. Out of curiosity, I film my car going 50 kilometers an hour, or 30 for you Americans, and put the export rate to 12 frames a second. And you can see here that for realistic road speed, here's how much your vehicle should travel each frame. This of course is subject to your intended frame rate and how fast you want your car to go. But you get the idea. And then if you want the car to slow down, it's the same story. You come from one wheel each frame to 75% of the wheel to 50, 25, 12 to the slightest nudge. You get the picture. To apply this to humanoid figures, it's the same principle. Here, Blitzwing lifts a sword. Here we go from half an arm's width to a full arm's width to double width until we get near our height. Then we slow it down. And do the ease in in reverse. And because this is a sword swing, we're going to go a little faster on a swing in the end and do a quick ease out. Like I mentioned in the previous video, real life doesn't jitter, and neither should your animation. It should always be focused on making smooth motion that doesn't attract the wrong kind of attention from your viewer. Does this mean you always need to move slow, that your ease in and ease out need to take forever? Of course not. There's always room for artistic motion here. I personally like to show a sense of weight in my animations, but you can absolutely get creative in the snappiness of your shots. So what have we learned here today? Use your onion skin. This is a fantastic little tool that can be found in Stop Motion Studio. I know iMotion has it, Clay Frames, Dragon Frame. It's in a lot of programs these days. And it's a wonderful little tool that lets you know where you've been so that you accurately know where you're going. Ease in, ease out. Unless you have snappy little motions that you know what you're doing there, never in real life do you go from zero to full throttle in a quarter of a second. So you need to use ease in, ease out. And finally, be consistent. If your car is doing this, you're going to make your passengers sick. And the same principle holds true with your audience. You don't want to make them sick either. So this has been the second of the series of the Stop Motion Tutorial. I hope you've learned something, and I hope you look forward also to the third one where we're going to get into walking and puppeting your animations and making things look good. This has been The Lazy Eyebrow.